Hi, I'm going to make a video series about capacitance calculation and uh, will cover several topics uh, about the theory, analytical calculation, and also numerical calculation using Compson Model Physics. So in the first video, which is this video, I will cover um, capacitance calculation between two conductors. In the second video, we will see how to calculate matrix of capacitances when we have multiple conductors. And in the third video, we will see how to calculate capacitance uh, of a coil, like self-capacitance of a coil. And also, there are some scenarios where you want to calculate capacitance of a disk of a coil and uh, similar things. And maybe I expand the video series to more topics in the future. So today, uh, as I said, we want to investigate capacitance between two conductors. So we see the definition and equations that are involved. And then uh, we do some analytical calculation for a simple case, that is parallel plate capacitors. And uh, then we use Compson Motor Physics to do the calculation numerically. Okay, so let us start with definition. You have two conductors. If we apply a potential difference between the two conductor, uh, so the charges move from one conductor to the other one, and basically uh, one conductor would get the negative charge and one conductor would get uh, positive charges. So people have realized that the amount of charge that sits on one of these conductors is proportional to the voltage that is applied uh, between the two conductors. So for example, if we apply V here, we have Q, and if we apply 2V, then we will have 2Q here. So then people realize that there is a relation, and then we say that Q is proportional to voltage. So Q is a constant multiplied to voltage, and this constant we call it capacitor. Now this capacitance depends on the geometry that we have, the geometry of the conductors, and the distance between them, and uh, also the material that is in between the two conductors, uh, the permittivity of that material. Now the question is, um, can the capacitance be uh, voltage dependent? Yes, in some cases the permittivity of the material that is between the conductors is voltage dependent, so maybe at certain voltage there is a value of permittivity, but then if you increase the voltage, the value of permittivity changes. So in that case, the total capacitance that you obtain here is also voltage dependent. But in normal cases, in majority of situations, the capacitance is not voltage dependent. There is also another scenario. If this medium that is here, uh, if this medium is soft and if these electrodes are loose, so after you apply voltage, because we have positive charges here, negative charges here, the electrodes can attract each other. So if uh, the amount of force uh, is sufficient, then maybe these electrodes, they can come close to each other. And so the geometry actually will change, and so the capacitance will change. So under certain condition, actually the capacitance can be voltage dependent. But in normal situation, we consider it not voltage dependent. Okay, so now we have an equation, which is Q is equal to CV, and the C is the capacitance. So of course, if we apply one volt potential difference between these conductors, then the amount of charge that sits on one of them is equal to this capacitance. So that is what we have. So C is equal to Q if potential difference is 1 volt. So the theory says that if uh, we have two conductors and then there is a potential difference between them, we can actually calculate the electric field distribution and voltage distribution in the space if we solve Laplace equation. So if we manage to solve Laplace equation, we know already voltage distribution in the space. From this voltage distribution, using the equation electric field is minus gradient of voltage, we can obtain the electric field. And from the electric field, we can obtain displacement field. So, okay, so now we have D. According to Gauss law, we know that the divergence of D is equal to the uh, charge density. And if we take the volume integral of this, so volume integral of divergence of D is equal to volume integral of the charge density. So this one becomes the total Q, and then we have the volume integral of divergence of D. So if we put the, the volume, basically, the volume that we are taking the integral across one of these conductors, basically, the other side will be the total Q. So this volume integral can be converted into surface integral. So instead of taking volume integral of divergence of D, we can take surface integral of D dot DS over the surface of the conductor, and that will be Q. So basically what I mean is that if we manage to solve Laplace equation, we will be able to obtain a D, and then we can calculate this integral over the surface of the conductor, and that is equivalent to the charge. So basically we can obtain the charge on this conductor. And we said that if the voltage difference is one volt, 
then the charge on one of the conductor is equal to the capacitance. So from this equation, we can obtain the capacitance. Okay, so now let us perform uh, some simple calculation. We have a parallel plate capacitor. One of the electrodes is connected to zero volt and one of them is connected to voltage V0. The distance is D. So in the direction of Y and in the direction of Z, these plates are infinite. So first we are going to solve Laplace equation. Okay, so Laplace equation in Cartesian coordinate is like this. But we know that in Y direction and in Z direction, uh, everything is similar, so if you take the derivative with respect to those two coordinates, it, it gives you basically zero. So this equation can be simplified into second derivative of voltage with respect to x2 is equal to zero. So we can take double integral. That means that the voltage between these two plates should have a format of Ax plus b. Now we can use the boundary conditions to obtain a and b. So for example, if uh, x is equal to zero at this point, voltage is zero. So if I put x zero here, the voltage is zero. So b is equal to zero. So b disappears. And now at uh, x is equal to d, the voltage is v zero. So if you put this one here, v zero is equal a times d. So a is v zero divided by d. So basically the voltage is v zero divided by d times x. So now we can calculate the electric field. Electric field is minus gradient of voltage. Take the gradient of this is minus V0 divided by D. This minus means that the electric field is in this direction. So the magnitude of electric field is V0 divided by the distance and the direction is from uh, positive voltage toward the negative voltage or toward the ground. Okay, so now let us see how to calculate capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. We know that the electric field is V0 divided by D. We say that the displacement uh, field is epsilon zero time E, assume that this is vacuum. So in that case, D will be epsilon zero V zero divided by D. And now we can calculate this surface integral of the displacement field because this is uniform. So this surface integral, if we assume the cross section of this top electrode is A. So A time D is equal to Q. And from there, Q is equal to epsilon zero A V zero divided by D. We just replace D from here. Okay, so now I have this one. I can calculate Q divided by V0 is epsilon 0 A divided by D. And this ratio, we said that that is the capacitance. So capacitance is epsilon 0 A divided by D. And in case the material has related permittivity epsilon R, then the capacitance will be basically this equation. Epsilon 0, epsilon R, A divided by D. Okay, so now this is basically analytical calculation for a parallel plate capacitor. Of course, there are many more symmetrical objects and simple geometries that we can calculate the capacitance analytically. For example, parallel plate capacitor, we saw it, concentric cylinder, concentric spheres, pair of parallel wires, two spheres, a wire on top of the conducting ground, like an overhead line, for example, or a sphere above the conducting ground, and so on. Some of these cases, maybe in the future, I'll make a separate videos, and uh, we'll see how to obtain the formula of capacitance analytically. But now what we are going to do is to look at uh, how to obtain the capacitance between two conductors in Comso multiphysics. As an example, I will use the parallel plate capacitor because now we already know the formula for the parallel plate capacitor. And uh, we do the simulation in Comsol and we see uh, whether the values are equal to what we have analytically or not. All right, so now I will show you how to calculate capacitance uh, between two conductors in Comsol multiphysics. So we start a new model. In this case, I select 2D. From ACDC, you select electric field and current, electrostatic. In the study, you select stationary. Okay, so the dimension is in meter. I create a rectangle. Here, I want to model a parallel plate capacitor, so it's very simple. I create a rectangle. And let's say the width is 1 meter and the height is 0 0.1 meter. So the top is the top electrode. The lower one is the lower electrode. So right-click on material blank material and here we have to define the permittivity of this material let's assume that permittivity is one right click on electrostatic select electric potential let's say the top electrode is like this and the voltage we assign one volt right click on electrostatic select ground and this one we assign it to the lower electrode this is zero volt this is one volt so if now we solve this and calculate the total charge on the top electrode or on the bottom electrode we can actually calculate the capacitor so from mesh 
we perform the mesh, we do the analysis. Okay, so now the Laplace equation is solved. We have the voltage distribution between the electrodes. You come on drive value, right click on it. We select integration. We want to calculate the charges over this uh, line. This is a 2D, so everything goes into the page. So if we take the line integral of this charge, then it also calculates basically uh, for one meter into the page. So I select the line integration. And which parameter we want to integrate? We click here, electrostatic, electric and charge, current and charges. We want to integrate the surface charge density or es.nd. So this one basically gives us the charge density per meter. Okay, so over which electrode? This is the electrode I selected, it comes here. And now if I evaluate it, you see that the amount of charge that we have here is 8.85 10 power minus 11 coulomb per meter. Now this value is actually it's equivalent to the capacitance per meter also. So is this correct or not? Yeah, it is correct actually because parallel plate capacitor we said is epsilon 0 A divided by D. So epsilon 0 is 8.85 10 power minus 12. Okay, so we have 10 power minus 12 there. 8.85 is already there, 10 power minus 12. So for the area, we have this, which is one meter, multiply into the page, which is also one meter. So that is the area of the top electrode. So it's one multiply one. But because we have divided by D, uh, that D we selected 0 0.1, which means uh, the 0 0.1 comes into the denominator, becomes 10. So 10 times 10 power minus 12 gives us 10 power minus 11. So this value of the charge that we obtain over this line is actually equivalent to the capacitance per meter or the capacitance of this object. So now basically this is the method how you can calculate the capacitance between two conductors. So if you would have another conductor here, another conductor here, you apply one volt to this, zero volt to the other conductor, and you solve the Laplace equation and you take the integral of the charge density over one conductor, that will be basically equivalent to the capacitance between the two conductors. Of course, pay attention that, for example, in this case, which is 2D, it's capacitance per meter. And sometimes if you have 2D axis symmetry, you have to be careful to do the integration over the whole uh, rotation, basically. So you must pay attention to those integration, how you do the integration. But in general, this is how you can calculate capacitance between two conductors. All right, so this is end of the first video. In the next video, I will talk about how to calculate matrix of capacitances uh, when you have multiple conductors. Bye.